Can it be brought back to life? 1994 BMW 530i. Customer states, uh, intermittently vehicle starts running horribly rough. It likes to stall. Long cranks, uh, on occasion it does not start. And it has an intermittent lack of power. So, we're gonna get this thing into the shop with a quickness, figure out what's going on here. Let's see if she's gonna start for us today. It's been parked here for uh, uh, about a week or so. Have not been able to get to it, but we're gonna see what we can do with this uh, particular BMW at 133,936.7 miles on the odometer, starting the engine. Came back to life, that's cool. All right, let's check under the hood real quick. Hopping the hood, and since it's the BMW, it is definitely the hood. And look at here, we're already getting into our uh, our misfire condition, it's running very rough as we speak. Let's get that hood bonnet popped open and take a look at what we have going on down here. Race car style. Rut row. I have deceived myself. I thought this was a straight six. It appears what we have here is a three liter V8. Interesting. And she's uh, it's starting to smooth out a little bit. Let's give it some throttle. Yeah, it's clearing up some. And then down at idle, misfire comes back. Okay, something's going down with it. We're not gonna take it for a test drive. Let's just go ahead, back her around, get it into the shop, and see what ails this uh, particular Joy Chato. So, stay tuned, because this is gonna be a very good video. Up in Z Hood. we got the check engine light on okay so the uh, primitive ecu in this obd1 bmw has identified that there is some kind of a problem here let's uh let's spin her around real quick like get it into the shop let's get out of the sun it's a little warm today although it has been a little cool outside the uh the heat is uh is on today i'm gonna go inside by my fans let's pull her in now i understand after a conversation with Eric from the I Do Cars YouTube channel, he loves these types of vehicles right here. I understand that this particular engine was uh, very prone or is very prone to have uh, issues with the intake manifold gaskets. And considering that uh, we have a rough running engine on cold start, it's intermittent, I would say that that's a good possibility. So let's check that first. I'm gonna bust out the smoke machine get everything set up under the hood. We're gonna plumb some smoke into the intake system and we're gonna see if this thing has any leaks at the gaskets. Powering down. Okay, round two, opening the hood. I like these types of hood. Hoods, uh, they give much access to our engine compartments. Here, let's see if we can mount an under hood light to a vertical hood, what do you think? Is this gonna work or is it not? Question is, do we have the friction here? Uh, negative. <laughs> we do not. Okay, that was silly. Let's try something else. How about that? There we go. Now we've got some illuminators going. Okay, so what I want to do, uh, we're going to grab the smoke machine and find a place to tap into this intake manifold, plump some smoke into it, and then see what the, what's going on here. So, let's get this guy unhooked. Uh, basically, what this thing is, is a big giant vaporizer, and... We're gonna plumb some shop air into it. That's the power supply. We're gonna connect it to a battery. That's the other power supply. And it's going to heat up the element inside of this machine. There is a liquid inside of there and it's going to produce a rich white smoke that uh, we can then use as an identifier to see if there's any leaks at the gaskets. So we shall need a positive. And it looks like that's gonna be our ground right there. We'll just use that one. That should be sufficient. Very good. Okay, power and ground. Let's get shop air, hook that up, and then we'll start pumping smoke into this unit. Ah, there it is. Hello, air nozzle. Let's see, we don't need the nozzle. Disconnect you. Let's get our hose around the obstructions over here. Come here. There we go. Let's hook this guy up right here.
don't scratch the paint. Get in there, there we go. Much more better. Okay, so now the tool is fully powered. Let's hit the on switch, red button. That will indicate that we are vaporizing. Let's go ahead and check our gauge. That's our flow meter. So we're gonna turn that all the way up. Maximum flow, and we will start to see some smoke cranking out from the business end of our tool. You guys see that? That's what we're looking for. So looking around at this intake, I'm not seeing much of a, a vacuum supply or much in the way of vacuum uh, lines rather. Uh, I think with the exception of, there's one right back here, with a check valve on it that runs to this little canister thing and then that goes over here. It looks like that's uh, maybe like an EVAP purge valve or something like that. I, I don't know all these parts, I'm not a BMW guy. So I'm learning uh, right along with you guys on this uh, particular situation, but I think that this vacuum line here will be sufficient. So let's get that guy hooked up to our, uh, our smoke machine. There we go. Okay, so we're now pumping smoke directly into this intake manifold. That thing's gonna fill up, and if there is any leaks at the gaskets, it should present itself in a moment here. So let's give it some time and see what happens. A few minutes later, and I do see some smoke coming out of somewhere, but it's not the intake manifold. Uh, it looks like it's coming out of the air box or somewhere down below over there. Nothing in the back. Okay, let's grab, let's start pulling off some of this intake stuff over here. I may need to fetch a screwdriver. We have some clamps going on. Yeah, there's a bunch of smoke right there. That's what the deal is with this. Let us pull this, uh, air box lid off of here. It's got two uh, two of these little clips, stainless steel clips, never mind. It's got three and another right down yonder. Four clips. We have a mass airflow sensor. Pins look good. And I need, we need a screwdriver to get the rest of this off of here. How does our filter look? Do we have a good air filter? Yes, yes we do, okay. Flathead screwdriver. Uh, you know what, we're gonna steal Dave's. It's right here, it's close to us. Thanks Dave for the screwdriver. Hope you don't mind. Let's unscrew that unit. And there should be another, another screw somewhere. Maybe it's on this side. Yeah, I see it right down yonder. Let's pull that guy loose. If there's like a hole or a Something going on in that tube right there. I think that's what's going on. Let's see if we can't get this guy to break free. Oh yeah, there's some smoke. Oh yeah, I found the problem. I think, I, well I found a problem. Let's power off our smoke machine real quick. Let's pull that lid out. I know what's going on here. We have an air metering problem. This engine's ECU does not know how much air is coming into this uh, vehicle's intake. That's the issue. If it does not know how much air is coming in, then it does not know how much fuel to provide to the engine. See that? Did a rodent eat that or is that just some dry rot? It looks like a, maybe some mouse damage. Could have been chewed on, yep. Okay, so the issue here is, is we have this mass airflow sensor. This thing is designed to monitor how much air is coming in through the filter. And it does that through resistance changes. There's a uh, heated element inside of there with a known specified resistance. And as that thing is heated up, when air cools it off as the air goes by, it will cool down that element and then change the resistance of that element. That resistance measurement is then monitored by the ECM and then the ECM can use that information to determine how much air is going into the engine. Issue is, if there's a hole downstream between the engine and the sensor, that means that there's potential and probably what's happening is air is coming in through this hole and is not being metered. If that air is coming in is not being metered, then the ECU does not know how much fuel to supply the engine and you will get misfires in uh, rough running conditions. So we need to locate this component right here. That's going to be a challenge, but I think we have, we've got a, we have a direction for sure. I'm still going to, uh, I think, probably plug this this uh, da, 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 this throttle body and 
this idle air control valve here. We're gonna plug those up later on and reapply the smoke just to give some more pressure to this intake to make sure that we don't have uh, lower gaskets that are also leaking. Okay, so this next part, I'm gonna show you exactly what not to do. This is not going to be a suitable repair, suitable repair but I'm gonna do it anyway. I'll tell you why in, in a little while, uh, but do not do this. This is highly ineffective. This is not the acceptable way to make this repair. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna do this uh, for diagnostic purposes, for short-term diagnosis, because I need to make sure that there's nothing else going on and I cannot proceed with diagnosing this situation with this giant gaping hole in the intake. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use electrical tape. And I'm gonna try my best to seal that hole up. Now you can see how that's not really a viable solution because there are corrugations in this and ridges and it's not a flat surface. Like if there was a hole right here, you'd probably tape this up or repair it. But this flexible rubber piece that's been chewed up by a mouse, uh, that cannot be sufficiently repaired uh, long term. I believe I can tape this thing up enough to be effective uh, just for testing purposes so I can determine if there's any other issues with this vehicle but this is not the way to do it. We see this stuff all the time where folks bring in vehicles where this stuff is taped up and it, it does not solve the problem. It may work for, you know, like a short-term solution, but in the long run, uh, this will just leave you right back to where you started from. So do not ever rely on electrical tape to fix intake manifolds that are leaking. And I realize that I'm being a hypocrite right now and I'm doing exactly what I said not to do, but this is for diagnostic purposes only. What I'm going to do here is put some tape over these holes to make an attempt to seal this up. And then I'm going to have to order the component to replace this with. It's not a common, st uh, a common part you would find in stock, but, uh, so I had to order it. And again, for the time being, I think that uh, this will at least serve to continue to diagnose. That's weird, my, uh, my speaker over there just started talking to me. It sounded like Siri, but Siri's not hooked up to that. I'm telling you guys, Skynet is real. Skynet is real. It's out there, the AI. It sees humans as a threat or I'm a crazy person. Yes, either way, I think that that will be sufficient for testing purposes. Let's bring this unit back over to the Beamer. We'll plug her back in, reconnect everything, restocking the engine, and we'll see if we get any kind of improvement uh, in running condition. However, before we do that, I do want to plug up this intake right here and throw some more, throw more smoke into that just to verify and make sure that it does not also have leaking intake manifold gaskets because that'll take this from a small job to a really big job really fast so let me go fetch the uh the kit for the smoke machine it contains uh, a number of uh little plastic plugs that i can use to fill those gaps we'll fill that business up re-smoke it and then retest if everything looks good we'll go ahead and throw the intake back on then we can finally go out for uh for our test drive so let us see which one of my yellow plugs is the correct yellow plug. I choose this one, no, this one, sure. Throw that one in there and then we've got this section right here to plug up as well. Let's fire up the smoke machine again and grab some more plugs. I don't know if I have one small enough for that hole. Maybe I do. Oh, sure I do. Look at that. There's more of them. Ah, mosquito! Die. Vile little creatures. They should not exist. They're like little nano-sized vampires. And nobody likes vampires. Especially nano-vampires. It's not gonna work. Uh, smaller still. There's a teeny tiny one in there. Let's try that one next. Microbial vampires. All right, that one doesn't fit, so that one's too small. The other ones are too big. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got an idea. There, that works. 
plug that guy right on up. Okay, let's fetch the uh, illuminators that are... I thought I left them on the wall. Where's me flashlights? Hmm. Oh, right in front of me. Let's see what else we've got going on here. Let's see, I, I do see some smoke, but it seems to be just, just be coming out through here. Maybe a little something coming out from way down below. I can't see it down there though. It's not the intake gaskets. It might be a throttle body gasket. Can you guys see that in there? A little bit of smoke coming out like right down here. I can't tell where it's coming from. Let's go check the other side. Let's see if we can't see it from over here. And that is a negatory. I do see, I think it's just the throttle body gasket. That's what it's looking like to me. Plug that up some more. Yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not seeing anything else here. Yeah, it's got to be the throttle body gasket. Yeah, there's a bunch of smoke right here coming through. You guys see all that? And... Da, da, da. Okay. Well, I'm going to go see if I cannot... Oh yeah, I see it coming out down there. Right down through that little hole right there is where it's coming from. I'm gonna see if I can't locate a throttle body gasket for that real quick. And if I can, we'll pull that off. And if I can't, we'll proceed, put that back on, go drive it, see how it runs. And then we can, uh, I guess we can order that gasket for later. Smoke machine powering down. All righty, let's get our little, uh, little blocker seal cap things back in their box there. I was able to locate a throttle body gasket that goes between the throttle body and the uh, intake manifold. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this uh all this bracketry and whatnot off of here and we're going to try to get some access uh, to the uh, bolts and we're going to remove that throttle body once that throttle body is removed uh we can pull it back check the condition of the gasket and uh see what we can do about replacing it so i'm going to need to do some disconnecting here on our connectors that's a uh, idle air control let's get that guy out of here oh all this stuff is super brittle it's scary I don't want to break things on this car. These parts are hard to get. Because it's a 1995 BMW with a V8. Uh, what do we need here? Torx 30? Yeah, those are Torx bits. Okay, let's bust out the Torx. And it looks like we need the electron ratchet. And then we'll get that thing removed. Oh look, we already have a problem. This bolt right here is already stripped. See it? Let's see if I can get it to come out. Nope, stripped right off. That's fun. Now I'm starting to see uh, why this thing doesn't run very well. Okay. wonder if I can get that thing off with a, like an easy out extractor or something. Maybe from the uh, outside of it, not so much the inside. So I've got, uh, got this little turbo looking fluted, very sharp extractor type of uh, they're for broken bolts broken studs. I'm going to try to hammer one of those onto that bolt on the outside. And if it can grip up enough, I might get it to break loose. It's either going to work or it's going to just slip right off. We're going to find out today. Ratchet coming in. See what she does. Let's give it a push here. And it is loosey goosey. I win. You lose, Bolt. You lose. That thing's on there too. It's got a good grip on it. I should be able to find a suitable replacement for this. I think so. Okay. We'll just set you down right there. Proceeding with the removal. Okay, let's go after our uh, fastener number three, located down bottom left-hand corner, taking care to not uh, strip anything. It would help if my ratchet was going in the right direction. Let's get a 
good purchase on those uh, on that fastener there. Cracker loose here. Unclicks. Okay. I gotta fish that guy out without dropping it. All right. That's two of the bolts removed. Numero tres. And we've got one more down over yonder there. What are you looking for over there, darling? Oh, the card. Yeah, she's going through my toolbox right now. Uh, that last fastener is gonna be not fun to reach. I can see it from the back side over here, but I can't really, can't really get into it. There's like this coolant line in the way right here. I think I'll put an extension on the tool here and see if I can't get at it that way. Okay, I got a little wobble extension, and I think if I push this hose back enough, I can slip this uh, this Torx bit in and make engagement with the fastener down here in the bottom right hand corner. And it looks like it just splined in. So we have a connection. What are you doing? Are you doing the, the dooley do? You're giving me PTSD with that phone That's right. what I thought was gonna Stop. happen. Turn it off. Turn it off. Get it away. No. Evil. Stop. Oh, no. Never again. No. No. Okay, so we have that, uh, we've got that guy on the fastener right there. Let's get in with the, uh, the ratcheting mechanism and see if we can't get her to break loose right here. It's a tight squeeze of all these hoses. I'm probably supposed to take these hoses off, but all I need to do is pull this uh, throttle body back to sneak that gasket out. Okay, that one's loose, but it's far away and I can't reach it. So I need to get my tool back and then go in there with some needle noses and extract that, uh, that fastener. You know, this actually might be a good time to try out some new pliers that I got from the tool truck the other day. They're Milwaukee's with the, uh, they're like curvy angular needle noses is what they are. They're deep reach cross handles. I, I impulse bought these, I saw them on the truck and I have, I have a curvy needle nose set. Yeah, these guys right here. This has been uh, one of my most invaluable set of pliers. Uh, I use it very frequently and I figured since this one is so useful, it couldn't hurt to have the uh, an additional trifecta of uh, needle noses with the angles. So let's get this thing on, uh, yeah, on packaged, unboxed real quick. And I think we'll use the teeny tiny one over there. Begin package opening procedure now. anti-theft devices. There we go. Did I get access? Sure did. Except for the, the bottom section. Come on, people. Like, it doesn't have to be that hard. There. See, the thing is, they consider this an anti-theft device. But the problem is, is a thief is not going to open something to steal it. They're just going to take the whole package and walk out of the store with it. So there's really no need for all this extra plastics. Okay, now that I'm done ranting about corporate idiocracy, let's go ahead and get that, uh, uh, that fastener out of that hole there. So what I'm going to do is probably stick this in here and realize that this is not the right tool to get a hold of that bolt down there. You see it way down, right down back in there. It's probably the wrong tool for this. It may be too long. Now, now I got her. Yeah, perfect. That was the right tool. Awesome. Now let's put that one right there. No, we won't, because then we get lost. I'll put it right there with the other one. Okay, so that is, I think, what I got four fasteners out, and there's one more right here in the center. Let's get that one disconnected. 
and I should be able to pull this uh, throttle body away from the intake. Unless there's a hidden fastener that I did not locate, in which case I'll be going back in. Pull that aside. I guess I need to remove these uh, throttle cables here. Hmm. Okay, that's how they go. All right, let's get those guys pushed through, not breaking anything. And I have a missing fastener somewhere. Yep, there's one in the middle, directly, directly in the center. Let's see if I can just poke at it and find it. Oh, look at that, I got, nope, missed it. I had it and I lost it. Now I have it again. Okay, that one's on. One more, one more shot on that ratchet. I will consider this like the moment of truth because if I drop that bolt, it's all over with. Well, not really, it's just not gonna be okay. So what I'm gonna do is maintain pressure in that direction so the bolt cannot fall out. There it is, see it? It's here on the back here on the back side. That's the fastener right there. And I dropped my tool. It's down here. Oh, come here, come here, come here, come here. Okay, can't get the tool out. This is not particularly fun to work on. Ah, come back. There we go. Got what I need. Okay, we've now exposed our gasket and I mean visually I can't see anything wrong with it but I'm uh, pretty certain it was leaking so we're gonna pluck this gasket out of here wait for the new one to show up and then reassemble and then test drive microbial screwdriver for the win we'll just get uh, get behind this uh, rubber gasket somehow some way come here come out embedded nasty gasket I believe the material is hardened and is less pliable and it's stuck or once upon a time some super genius glued it in that's also possible come out got it all right a couple hours later and I have received a replacement gasket uh, for our uh, throttle body here. This one's a little deformed, but it should be okay. It appears to be the correct uh, shape and whatnot, but something I do would like, or I would like to point out, look at the, uh, the thickness difference here. See how this one is like three or four millimeters thicker than this one is? That tells me that this gasket has compressed and this one is the correct, uh, correct thickness so uh, that definitely confirms a potential leak let's go ahead and get this unit uh, put back into that intake and then uh, we'll see about getting this thing put back together I'd really like to get this uh, road tested before the end of day which is actually coming up uh, quite rapidly I started this car early afternoon and now it is very late afternoon because I was waiting on the parts to show up Stick that guy right in there. Feed it on in to its groove. That's good. Okay. Cool beans. We're getting somewhere. Check that out. All right. So now we take our, uh, our throttle body. And I think I'm going to want to clean that out a little bit. Look at that. It's nasty in there. Let's, let's throw some spray in it. Clean it out some. Wipe it down. Get rid of all that varnish and buildup and whatnot, and then uh, we'll put the we'll bolt the thing back on. I do not see throttle body cleaner. Mm, tire shine, no. More tire shine, no. Battery, no. Hmm. No. Yeah, whatever. We we'll use some penetrating oil. Penetrating oil cleans everything. It's also really good for cleaning off toolboxes because toolboxes get oil on them and penetrating oil is a great cleaner for other oils. Just hose that down some, let it soak for a moment and then uh, we'll wipe it down. This car is very awkward because every time I need to go to the other side, we have to walk all the way around it. 
it's a slightly difficult no matter here we'll just come in here with a towel give this a couple wipes on the back side of the throttle plate and more importantly we're going to open up that throttle plate and clean off the inside of the bore and around the edges of the plate so what happens is you get that build up on there and it closes off the plate when the throttles are closed and it should have a slight bit of air to bypass it so what will happen is the idle air control motor or valve will have to uh, open up slightly to compensate for the air that should have been already squeaking by the throttle plate and i'll reach around the back side and wipe that down on the other side of the plate as well see that there we go okay now let's uh let's try to get this thing bolted back on what we're going to do i'm going to take the uh the center nut that's the last one that we took off and i'm going to set this up like so pushing it through its hole bear with me here you gotta get it all lined up and we'll start with this one because that appears to be the hardest one to uh to reach and get a hold of so we'll start off with the, the difficult one and then we can work our way around to the, the easier ones so i'm keeping pressure that direction on the tool and i'm kind of poking around looking for the hole there it is felt it slip in give it a couple turns good i think we're started yeah burr Okay, that guy's in. Let's put in a couple more screws here. Let's get everything lined up real nice like. So we have two of those bad boys installed. Let's get that one in. Uh, this one, you know what, hang on. We're gonna switch this one out. Put that one over yonder. And I'm gonna take this one, the one that has the uh, turbo socket attached to it. We'll put that one in right there. And then this guy, I can't reach, so we can employ our uh, little needle noses here. Feed that into its home. Good. And I'm going to try to just reach back, give it a turn. I think I got it. Okay. Let's run down this uh, bottom stud one more time, give it some torque. Picks. move on over to that next one I'll do the bottom ones and then the top ones clickages that one's on let's go around to the other side and get that really hard to reach one installed and then we'll tighten this one down and then do the top ones yeah this is the one that was you can see it's way down at the bottom down there and I can't get, can't really get into it. So I'm gonna stick it into this little groove there, into the hole with, uh, with the needle noses again, same way I took it out. And then I'll fish the tool around from the front side, line it up, spline it in, and then tighten it. That's the plan on my non-plan plan. So here's the strategy. I've got a hold of it. And I'm going to attempt to not be able to do that again all right let's flip this around this way and try it from this angle i think this is the way it all pointed when i took it apart i think if i can just get this to slide into the hole for the throttle body then uh, i can use the torx bit to finish it off hmm. Oh, this is scary. If I drop it, I have to take all this stuff apart again. And I don't front to. Can't find the hole. Can't find the bolt. Bear with me, folks. This is just as painful for me as it is for you. My knees are locked. I'm starting to sweat. It's scary. And I can't see what's happening. Ooh, I dropped it and caught it. All right, redo. Ah, 
got it. Okay. That bolt is now in the hole. I'm gonna come in with the Torx, push it all the way down, and now it is starting to become tight. It's threading in, yep. I'm aware visibility is horrendous. You guys can't see, but I'm hoping that my narration will uh, will compensate for that. Threading, threading, slipping, gravity, threading some more, and torquing clips achieved. Okay, bottom side is torqued. Good. Let's get the uh, top fasteners next. Start with the center one, I suppose. See how that throttle body was drawn into the intake? Creating a nice seal, good. Let's get that next one. Mix. And then I'm gonna have to take those back off because I neglected to remember this bracket which goes like that but that's fine I'll do that in a minute I'd rather tighten up this last bolt over here first and then I'll take those other two back off I felt like I knew that I was forgetting something trust your feelings use the force Yeah. Okay, redo, take those other two fasteners back out because I love my job. I'll do it twice. Rear fastener. Unclicks. Center one is next. Bracket action right there. Doing it again. Handy again. There we go. So now for our cables. These guys, I believe, I need to. What do I do? How do I do that? Just, uh, Go down and snap it in. This is uh, alien technology. Okay. Throttle cables are in. Throttle's bolted down. All that's tight. This is good. I'd like to put a little bit more torque on that bolt over there. So I'm going to need some slightly more aggressive pliers. Will these work? I bet they will. Yep. Sure enough. And I left some nice knurling on it right there so the next guy can flyer those right off as well. So, let's get the claw hammer out of here. That has no business being in a BMW engine bay. We need to take our idle air control motor or valve. I don't know if this is a motor or a valve or a valve in a motor. Whatever, we gotta put that thing back in. Just give it some wiggle action. And then this little rubber business goes into that little bracket thing, I think. Again, alien technology. How do you do that? Oh, that's not fun. Hang on. Do I need to pry bar the, that rubber thing in? What is this? Maybe I should hit it with a hammer. Here, how about pry bar or pry driver? We'll do that instead of a hammer. It's probably a, a better option. I don't know why I can't get that to go on. There's some major interference. Let's flip this over. Maybe I've got it kind of a set up wrong or something, wrong angles. Incorrect dangles for these angles. Or some kind of business. Am I about to be defeated by a rubber bracket? Seriously? I do not accept this. Let 
redo. Let us try some lubricant here. Maybe that bushing wasn't seating all the way and or grommet or seal this thing. This thing, that's what I'm talking about. A little better, perhaps. And it's better work or I'm gonna throw it away and use zip ties. I'll do it. Yeah, it seems to need to come down more, but I can't get it to do that. Whoa! Now I can. Got it. Okay, so after almost stabbing myself, that's a success. Let's get our stuff plugged back in. That's our throttle body, idle air control, and it's looking like we are red eye to get the uh, intake pipe reinstalled and then we can continue to test and make sure that, uh, well, there's no more intake leaks. Then we can possibly go test drive the car. Yay. Now, I reiterate, this is not a permanent solution. This car is not going to leave with uh, that as a solution because that's not right and that's not a repair, but it will be sufficient to determine whether or not uh, additional diagnostic is required. So, with all that being said, let's get our air filter back in its little home right here. There we go. Line that stuff up, snap it in. Always do the harder snaps to reach first. That way you've got space for extra flanges on your uh, easier to access snaps. Because sometimes the last two are much more difficult than the first two. Slide that boy on there. Let's get the uh, mass airflow sensor reconnected. This is where, that's where all the magic happens right there. Okay, let's run around back to the other side, get some clamps tight. After I fail to uh, clamp this clamp, we'll get this one first. Run that unit down and two more clamps and then we'll restart the engine. Hmm. Oh, this is fun. Point that the right way. Try again. Ooh. There. See, so this kind of stuff that, but or this is the kind of stuff that folks don't like about these things. All this interference of components. Like, look at that. There's a a clamp that runs into another clamp. If you pull this out too hard, it pulls that back out and undoes everything that you were just doing. It's frustrating. I suppose it's fine when you're used to these things, but when you're not uh, proficient at them, it's a challenge. Like I said, alien technology. So real quick, before we pull the rest of the stuff apart, I'm gonna fire up the, uh, the smoke machine again. We're gonna pump some more smoke into this unit and just verify that in fact, uh, yeah, we're smoking. Make sure that those uh, leaks are sealed up. I hate to have misdiagnosed that uh, throttle body leak. It's possible. Get on there. Get all the way on there. There. Okay, that's good. We're re-smoking the intake. Let's give it a couple seconds and uh, we should see something leaking or we shouldn't see, but hopefully we don't see. But we will see probably some smoke coming out over here, maybe over there. Again, this is uh, just temporary. That is not the repair. I mean, it could be. It could be if you were doing hack job repair work. But what I'm main, mainly interested in is the throttle body gasket that we just installed. So let's give that a minute or two. That'll give me time to pick up my goodies and clear the stuff out from under the hood. Oh, by the way, if anybody who has ever worked on this specific car uh, was missing a set of channel locks. I found them. So if you own some channel locks that go to a uh, to a BMW, um, I got your channel locks. I'm not going to give them back though. Those are mine now. Those are the rules. Returning. It's been a couple minutes. We're still plumbing bunches of smoke into this intake, and I do not see 
any leaks occurring uh, around this area where we saw them earlier. So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect our smoke machine. There we go. I'm gonna plug this guy back into the check valve and uh, let's get out of here and hit the road. Go drive this thing around and see how she runs. Powering down. Power that off and let me have my power lines back. You can snap that thing back into place. Good. And get our goodies out of here. Oh no, I'm stuck. My hose was stuck on other hoses. Stay. Okay, looking good, looking good, looking good. Bolts are tight, 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 tight. Clamps are tight. That's on. We're looking good around here. Very nice. Luminator powering down. Let's get rid of this guy. Hang you up right here. Okay, now we don't slam these hoods. You just kind of roll them back. There we go. So look, did you notice how a second ago when I closed the hood, my hands were filthy and now they're not editing. I washed my hands. Anyway, restarting the engine. Let's see if this thing's gonna run well or not. Okay, it's alive. RPM's way up, look at that. Let's see if she's gonna calm down. Yeah, so far. Give some throttle here. Firing down. A little better, okay. Check engine light's still on, but we also did not attempt to clear any trouble codes yet. I imagine that the ECM needs to recalibrate its fuel mapping because it was used to seeing less air coming in. And now that we have fixed, temporarily fixed the leak, it's seeing the appropriate amount of air come in, or at least it's measuring the appropriate amount of air, and it's gonna have to adjust its uh, fuel curves for that. And that is why we test drive. So let's back this thing out. Honks for safety. Go for a quick spin around the block, over the bridge, around and through and whatnot, and then, uh, Mm, that's broken. See that? And then we'll swing her back in, see what uh, see how she runs, and then I think we can call this one good for the day if it's going to uh, not misfire, which it is not doing such things as we speak right now. So it is running much more smoothly. But I'm gonna take it for a test drive, let it come up to operating temperature, give it a few more key cycles, and then uh, we'll park it until I receive replacement components. I decided to order them from the online world of eBay. We are all just in time. We're getting out of here as the concrete guys start up. That's cool. Bunch of noises, which are not fun. Full parking lot today. Yeah, guys, look right here. This is that Chinese car thing I was telling you about. Look at this thing. Look at that stupid little thing. It's actually made out of Chinesium. Is it called an uh, Activa? Activa 001? I don't know what that means, but yeah. We legitimately have a Chinese car in the parking lot. I didn't even know you could import those into the US, but we got one. It's really cool, actually. It's kind of like a, uh, I don't know, like a, uh, what do they call them? Like those Barbie cars? Power wheels, there we go. It's like a Power Wheels with a gas engine. I bet two dudes can flip that thing over. That would be fun. I should import those and then sell them. I can be a Chinese car dealership. How cool would that be? Right, we're good. Let's get out of here. So it's running, it's shifting. It's not misfiring. The power band feels smooth. Okay, I can, I can get down with that. Give it some brakes. This car is kind of squishy though. I imagine that's a, a symptom of its age. Everything just feels squishy. The suspension feels kind of squishy. Brakes feel a little squishy. No matter. All right guys, so what we're gonna do, 
we're gonna make it right up here at the light head over the bridge give it a little bit of full throttle when we crest the top of the bridge we will decelerate oh no the window is now stuck down cool love when that happens anyway we're gonna decelerate when we crest the bridge and uh, if all is well we'll swing back to the shop and it looks like I have to deal with this window thing next that's fun hey look check engine light turned off that's cool yeah window is not going anywhere beginning full throttle now seems to be pretty good it's running strong Give us some brake action while we're here. Sorry for the wind noise. Brakes feel good, nice and smooth like. Constant decel. When we reach the stoplight up here, if there's anything up with the engine, misfires or running rough, it will uh, immediately present itself. Okay, coming down to a stop idle and we are smooth yeah I broke the window regulator we'll see if the other ones are broken nope they're all not okay how about that one that one's broken that one's still trying to go back up though we can do that we can get that one manually there straighten it out raise it up oh this is horrible Okay, I'll fix that stuff later. All right, guys, I think this thing is in good shape. Oh, the check engine light came back on. Fail. All right. Well, it's running better than it was. Uh, I'm going to get back to the shop. We're going to go ahead and park this thing. It's end of day. It's 4.57 p.m. I'm going home in approximately three minutes. I have things to do this evening. It happens to be my day of birth uh, when I recorded this video, so I'm going to go have my day of birth party. Um, so that being said, we are going to be on a hold until I get that uh, air intake ducting. Um, that light may have come back on just because the ducting is not completely sealed. I don't know. But we're going to get that ducting. It's already been ordered. When that thing shows up, um, we're going to just swap that part back out. When we do that, I'll go ahead and finally bust out the scan tool and see what those uh, DTCs tell us. And then we can continue our diagnostic from that point forward. But as of right now, uh, we have found two faults in the air intake system, found the leak. Uh, we found the hole that the rats or the mice chewed. It could have been a chipmunk, but we found the hole in that intake tube. Lights out again. And that was incredibly, uh, it's critical. Yeah, he's making a lot of noise. Somebody is. It's that hood music. So anyway, you guys, uh, thank you guys for watching this video. I'm gonna go ahead and close this one out. Uh, I think I'm definitely gonna make a part two on this since the check engine light just came back on again. It appears to only do that at idle. So uh, stay tuned for the second uh, edition of this uh, BMW with the three liter V8. As always, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please feel free to let me know about that in the comment section down below. Do not forget to tap that like button while you're down there. And most importantly, have yourselves a fantastic day. See you guys later in the video. End of day, end of BMW, end of transmission, and end of check engine light. Again. Get up there. I win, window. Goodbye for now, BMW.